The Borderlands series is similar to Fallout and many other RPGs in that there are a ton of different ways to play the game. You can use different classes, you can stick to a single type of weapon, you can only use weapons from a single manufacturer. But there is one challenge that's different, as it removes an important part of the game. Can you beat Borderlands without using a shield? The first decision we need to make is what class to play as. Lilith is almost universally considered overpowered, but to be honest I never really liked playing as a siren. Without a shield, health regeneration is crucial, which is why I chose Mordecai. After getting off the bus, I followed Claptrap, changed my colors to blue and yellow, and got into combat for the first time. While I only have 100 health to begin with, it's not uncommon for enemies to drop health vials, so getting through the bandits and entering Firestone wasn't difficult at all. Then I rescued Claptrap, killed a few dogs, and got the medical vending machine back online. Something happened here that occurs a few times throughout this run. If you don't have a shield and you buy one or pick one up, it will automatically become equipped. Right now, it's easy to unequip it before it has a chance to recharge, but in the heat of battle, it's not so easy. After killing a few bandits and meeting TK Baja, I found Baja's stolen food, bought a few grenades, and was off to Skag Gully to kill Ninetoes. Not long after entering Skag Gully, I leveled up to level 5 and could finally send my combat parrot out to strike down my foes. I fought my way through more skags and bandits until I reached Nine Toes, who died in about 5 seconds. I went down for the first time, fighting one of his puppies, killed the second one rather quickly, and it was time to spend my second skill point, also known as the first skill point to actually matter. The skill I'm after is Riotous Remedy, which regenerates up to 3% of your health per level over the course of 7 seconds. But 5 points must be put into the Gunslinger skill tree first, so I opted for the Deadly skill because more critical hit damage is always a good thing. Back in Firestone, I tried to take out Bonehead even though he was 6 levels higher than me. It went about as badly as you could have guessed. I needed to level up a bit before I took on Bonehead again, so I went back to Skag Gully to do a few more side quests. Collecting the 8 blade flower seeds was the hardest part of this run so far, primarily because fighting multiple higher level Skags at once is not the easiest thing in the world. I found that sitting back and sniping everyone I could was the best way to go about doing this. Who would have guessed that the best way to not take damage was to not take damage? Show of hands, who saw that coming? Alright, put your hands down, you fucking weirdos. With the seeds in my pants, I killed Scar to retrieve TK Baja's leg, found the second data recorder, turned in the missions, got myself up to level 10, bought a new shotgun, and was finally ready to take the fight to Bonehead. This was actually really annoying, because I thought I was nailing him with headshots, but they were going right through him. After a few minutes of popping up from behind cover, I killed Bonehead, killed his friends, and caught a ride. After I ran over a few small animals, I hit level 11 and put the first point into Riotous Remedy. From here on out, every time I kill an enemy, my health regenerates. Now that I can actually stay in combat for a little while, I spent some time doing a few side missions to level up again, I tried to kill a level 17 badass raider at level 12 and was promptly slaughtered, I turned in the missions, didn't level up, and was off to the arid hills to get Sledge's key, find the parts to a sniper rifle, and kill Mo and Marley and me. No matter how many times I play Borderlands, there's always one weapon part that I can never find. But I found it, and despite being underleveled, I ventured inside Sledge's safe house to find the key. It didn't help matters when I missed three near point blank headshots in a row. I eventually fought my way through the bandits and psychos, saved the life of a worthless claptrap, and was fingertips away from the key I so badly wanted. Believe it or not, killing a level 16 Roid Rage Psycho at level 13 without a shield is not at all easy to do. The small upside is that his health doesn't recharge when you die, and his grenades aren't that difficult to dodge once you get used to doing it. Several deaths and a couple dozen shotgun headshots later, the giant freak died, I had my key, I left the safe house, and was off to kill me some doggies. They were both annoying to deal with, what with all the other skags and whatnot. So, I enlisted the help of some nearby bandits and psychos who were more than happy to die for my cause while I hid behind a building. Then it came down to Marley and me. Once again, I accidentally equipped a shield, which was promptly removed, the Clifford wannabe was slain, and I was off to the Lost Cave to gather shock crystals. I spent about 20 minutes in there and leveled up two times to prepare to face Sledge. But before that, I stopped by the arid Badlands Arena to take part in the Circle of Death. 
You get to kill dogs and run the risk of being torn apart by wild animals? Fuck those golden retrievers at the dog park. This is where the party's at. I was one to two levels ahead of everything I was facing, so this was more time consuming than challenging to be honest. Onto the headstone mine, the push towards sledge was easy, all things considered. At the mine, I discovered something that would be a cactus in my ass several times throughout this run. Turrets. Their individual shots don't do much damage, but the endless barrage is a real bitch to deal with. A rocket launcher is recommended here. Sledge turned out to be rather prickly. The space you fight him in is confined as hell, and his attacks do a ton of damage. Normally, you could take a shot or two, then hide behind cover to wait for your shield to recharge, and do it again. Can't do that here though. I tried sucking off his life with my grenades, but it wasn't too effective. What I eventually did was use a rocket launcher, and used a few structures inside as cover. Take a shot, hide, reload, then do it again. It took 20 rockets, which do up to 452 damage each, and a few combat rifle shots to finish off the big boy. The rock hard fight was worth it though, when I turned in the mission to not a real Dr. Zed that will take everything you think you know about anything and turn it on its head. I got a class mod that can regenerate health. Not only do I regenerate 2 health per second, but I am now healed up to 15% of my max health per kill over the course of 7 seconds. Before heading to the Doll Headlands, I found some combat rifle parts, picked up some skulls, found Bruce McLean, pretended that I care about the environment by picking up litter, and went back to the Headstone Mine to blow some shit up. Then I spoke to a Claptrap, and finally entered the Doll Headlands. The first thing I did in the Doll Headlands was head to Skagzilla's pen. Surprisingly, he wasn't at all difficult to kill. Maybe a dozen shots to his face flaps, and he died. Next, I cleared out a bunch of bandits from Lucky's last chance watering hole with an SMG I found in Skagzilla's carcass. Rescued Lucky, flipped some switches, got the fast travel system back online, and got half a dozen new quests to complete. On the way to the racetrack to run over some scythids, I took out most of the outriders necessary to draw out Mad Mel, then I killed the 50 scythids, destroyed a few fuel tanks, and went down to a cavern where I upgraded to a much better class mod that doubled my health regeneration and fought the guardians for the first time. After turning in the side missions I had completed, I fought Mad Mel with the same strategy I used when facing Sledge. With Mad Mel now deceased, I could finally enter New Haven, and once again, I went straight for the side missions. The first mission had me killing Mothrak, which wasn't too difficult if you take cover in the catcher ride station while your health recharges. I trucked on TK Baja, who is now dead, and went to the Tetanus Warrens to gather corrosive shards and to kill King Wee Wee. I also repaired a claptrap and upped my inventory to 24 slots. Before heading into the Rust Commons West, I used one of my golden keys to open the golden chest. The combat rifle I got was solid, but I was hoping for a revolver or a sniper rifle. Still reeling from that disappointment, I tracked down some parts for Scooter in Rust Commons West, found the parts for an SMG, cleared some pipe, got fucked by a giant bird, then killed that bird, picked up a few more of Patricia Tannis' journals, and found Miss Tannis. You might be wondering why it seems like I'm just sort of glossing over everything. It's because 1. There's a lot of stuff to talk about, and 2. The majority of the enemy encounters aren't really that difficult. Back to the game, after turning into side missions, I destroyed a few ammo dumps for Marcus and went to Crazy Earl's scrapyard. I killed the bandits and spider ants for Crazy Earl, repaired another claptrap, and found myself a stupid powerful sniper rifle. The one I've been using does 267 damage, but the new one does 360 damage. Of course, it fires 89% slower, so between the horrible fire rate and me being several levels higher than everything I was fighting, it wasn't that useful to me. After I placed a few charges, I opened a chest and found my first legendary weapon, a dull bloody anaconda. It was a bit disappointing though. Not only was the level requirement 10 levels lower than my current level, but it did 77 less damage than my current revolver. But it was more accurate and fired twice as fast, so it wasn't worthless, and I did use it for a while. I then did another mission for Marcus, and picked up two dozen bottles of booze in Traitor's Landing for Crazy Earl. Got the bounty board in Rust Commons East set up, and decided that I didn't feel like doing any more side missions, so I was off to kill Krom. The turrets guarding the entrance to Krom's canyon were as horrible as I expected them to be. The enemies in that same area were at my level, which was great because it had been a while since normal bandits had posed any sort of a challenge. At Krom's canyon, I decided to find the 10 cans of skag meat for Crazy Earl before I dealt with Krom. This was more troublesome than I thought it would be, 
primarily because there's a level of verticality in Crom's Canyon that isn't present in any of the other parts of Borderlands. Also the fact that you're dealing with at-level enemies, and quite a few of them at that. With another claptrap saved, I opened a chest and found my first Iridian weapon. The 10110 cannon, the most powerful weapon I've found thus far. I couldn't use it yet, but it would come in handy later on, and I even used it to kill Reaver. With Reaver dead and the cans of meat found, I had to backtrack through the canyon to get to Krom. Krom has a turret, which had the potential to be annoying. Luckily, I had a sniper rifle with a good zoom and there was a big rock that I could hide behind. Krom was easy to kill. I made my way up to his platform, got the vault key fragment, and jumped off a cliff because I didn't feel like backtracking through the canyon for a second time. I then turned in the missions, and my next objective was to find Taylor Cobb. But before that, I spent a bit longer than I should have trying to remember how to lower the bridges in Rust Commons East. Eventually it came back to me, I talked to the requisite claptrap, literally sucked the life out of Janus Cobb, and I entered Old Haven. This was quite the challenge at first. The Crimson Lance soldiers are more formidable than your run-of-the-mill bandits and psychos. They have a physical shield, are tough, and can lay down turrets. Once I got the hang of how to deal with them, I shut down the Crimson Lance's smoke signals, tried to figure out where this mission marker is, gave up after a few minutes, activated two beacons, and experimented with a class mod and a pistol that drained 20 shots in about a second. I wasn't going to use it because the class mod didn't have any health regeneration, but it was still cool to see. Then I went back to the Doll Headlands to find buried bandit treasure. It sucked. The mission description says there is also a kick-ass gun. That's a lie. It was all shit. The only redeeming quality was that the pistol on the right vaguely reminded me of a 1911. Before dealing with the last Cobb brother, I sunk a few ships in Treacher's Landing and picked up some fish. Taylor Cobb was far worse than Janus because he'd installed turrets, the bane of my existence. When the turrets were destroyed, I used my Iridian cannon to rid the area of a badass bruiser and the other bandits. I used my patented life suck technique on Taylor Cobb. It wasn't as effective as it was on his brother, but my suck was good enough that it was easy to finish off the big Cobb. From his chest, I found a fantastic new sniper rifle that was better than my current sniper in almost every way. I turned in a few missions to level up, and with my new rifle in hand, I went to face a mysterious challenge. The Rag Hive. My new sniper did significant damage to the beast when critical hits landed. Once I had whittled its health down enough, I killed the giant monstrosity with a revolver to raise my pistol proficiency to level 10. It didn't drop anything too interesting though. After I gave the key fragment to Tannis, I went back to Old Haven to retrieve her claptrap, which was easier than my first run through Old Haven. From there, I made my way to the Salt Flats, killed a few bandit patrols, and fought my way up to Baron Flint. The shotgun I'd been using for a while made quick work of Hans and Franz, and then I slipped and fell off the goddamn excavator. With a new lease on life, I damn near took off Baron Flint's head with a point-blank headshot from a sniper rifle. Then came the twist. Patricia, giant, worthless cunt, Tannis lied to me. The Crimson Lance arrived. I stepped in a mine trying to save Claptrap, found an Iridian shotgun that would soon become my favorite weapon, and pushed through a cave system in an effort to find Tannis. I thought I had her, then Master McCloud and his royal guard ambushed me. They definitely had the potential to be a real challenge, but with my life-sucking grenades and a corrosive rocket launcher, they went down rather quickly. I then had to fight through the Crimson Fastness to save Tannis. It was here that I realized how great the Iridian Thunderstorm really was. Even the badass engineers could be taken out with just a few shots. Back outside, I was at the Crimson Enclave and had to activate three transmitter consoles, all the while dealing with the Crimson Lance soldiers and guardians. It took about 25 minutes to get all three consoles activated, and I died a few times, but it wasn't too difficult. After I turned on the transmitter console, the final push began. The end is near. I have to find Commandant Steel before she does something stupid. On the way, I killed the Lance infantryman who dropped my third legendary weapon. It's not bad. It does have a huge magazine, but I have rifles that do more damage and are much more accurate. Not really worth using, to be honest. I went back to the Salt Flats, fought my way through the descent, found a combat rifle that was better in every way than the legendary one I just found, and arrived at the Iridian Promontory. The Iridian shotgun I found earlier really shined here. By this point, my Iridian weapon proficiency was up to level 8, making my Iridian weapons actually usable. This is another area that can be time-consuming to get through if you choose to fight all the enemies. 
which you probably should since the Guardians give out thousands of experience each when they're killed. By the time I arrived at the vault, I was about 75% of the way to level 36. I was also interested in fighting the Destroyer, as Gearbox had said that they made it a much more challenging fight. After the cutscene, the final battle began. My thunderstorm was plenty effective. Not long after the fight began, I was milliseconds away from death when I fired a shot as the screen faded to black, and I was back in the game. I then pulled out a legendary rocket launcher that I found earlier, but didn't mention, and promptly fucked up the Destroyer in a few shots. The Destroyer did a self-suck back to its own dimension, Angel revealed that the vault won't open for 200 years, and I beat Borderlands without using a shield. And that's going to do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Borderlands without using a shield. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.